in a spiral arm of a huge galaxy called the Milky Way, spins an extraordinary planetary system, our solar system. For millennia, it was the only one we knew. But all that has changed. Astronomers have discovered more than 2,600 planetary systems to date, but none of them are quite like our home. The incredible thing about astronomy is when you look out into the universe and you realize you have completely misinterpreted your own home. So one important thing we've learned in discovering planets around other stars is that our system isn't the normal system. It's not what we see everywhere. In fact, as we discover more planets orbiting other stars, we see that ours is an oddball. Most other solar systems look completely different than ours. February. 2017, NASA makes a huge announcement about a system in the Aquarius constellation, TRAPPIST-1. TRAPPIST-1 is a little unusual. It's a little bit smaller and cooler than the sun, but it has seven planets orbiting it. And you think, well, that's not that peculiar. We have eight. But these are seven roughly Earth-sized planets. There's not a lot of variety there. And they also orbit the star very close in. All seven planets somehow orbit closer to their star than Mercury, our innermost planet, does to our sun. Perhaps one of the greatest puzzles that have come out of finding planets around other stars is that they typically have orbits well inside the orbit of Mercury. It's really odd, in my view, that the solar system is hollowed out. There's nothing inside of Mercury's orbit. Why is that? The mystery of the missing inner planets is like a cosmic whodunit, turning scientists into detectives, asking, do we really know how the story of our solar system unfolds? The whole process is like cosmic CSI. You're trying to put together the clues to find out something that happened when nobody else was there to watch it happen. Like detectives, scientists start with the simplest explanation. So in some ways, the early solar system's like a pool game. All the billiard balls represent the pieces, the building blocks, the planetesimals, or the planetary embryos that are going to come together eventually to build the final system of planets. In planetary formation, the simplest theory is that the planets all formed where we find them now. It's called the classical model. How does this play out? You start with a few planetesimals, they collide with each other, and they grow a little bit larger in this region of the solar system. This process continues, and you grow all the way up to planets, with each planet in each of the zone of the solar system accreting material just from its neighborhood, and no one's really moving around very far. But this classical model can't explain why our inner solar system is missing all kinds of material. The classical model has no natural explanation for why Mercury is the last thing that we know of inward towards the sun. That there are no planets, no asteroids, nothing inside Mercury is still a mystery that the classical model can't easily explain. The area close to our sun isn't just missing asteroids and small planets. It's also missing really big ones. The very first exoplanets, the very first alien worlds we discovered were Jupiter mass or bigger planets orbiting their stars very closely, even closer than Mercury orbits the sun. Astronomers have so far discovered around 300 gas giants scorchingly close to their suns. They call them hot Jupiters. But how they form is a mystery. Gas giants like Jupiter should be born out of the cold, far from their suns. It's very hard to imagine hot Jupiters forming where we see them today. The temperatures at distances from a star where we find hot Jupiters are so hot, it's hard to imagine any material condensing out of the solar nebula. This kick-started the idea that maybe these hot Jupiters, as they were called, 
may have actually formed farther out, like near where our Jupiter is now. And in the early solar system, they started migrating inward toward their star. So what happens when a planet the size of Jupiter moves inward? Can this help explain the inner solar system's missing mass and answer why we don't have a hot Jupiter? To find out, Kevin Walsh and colleagues simulate the first 10 million years of the solar system. They call this model the Grand Tack. The Grand Tack model is a scenario designed to help understand how the terrestrial planets could have formed, thinking about what the giant planets might have been doing in the early solar system. The planets form within a thick disk of gas and debris that surrounds the newly formed sun. The Grand Tack model simulates what happens if Jupiter moves in towards the sun through this disk. It's pushing all of the asteroids in its path into the inner solar system. All of that material is what is going to come together to form the rocky planets. Jupiter's immense gravity pulls in more and more material, forming a dense wave of debris bulging out behind it. The pressure of this bulge pushes Jupiter further inwards. Like a wrecking ball, Jupiter should clear out all the planet-building material from the entire inner solar system and become a sun-hugging hot Jupiter. But something checks Jupiter's path of destruction. If Jupiter had hung around much longer in the inner solar system, we wouldn't be here. So something must have drawn it out very rapidly. And what could possibly move a big, massive planet rapidly? And the answer is another big, massive planet. Saturn. It forms just after Jupiter and is hot on Jupiter's heels as it too migrates towards the sun. Saturn is pretty big itself. The combined effect of the two giant planets migrating is that once Saturn is large enough, it can actually change the way that the gas disk is interacting with both the planets. And it can stop Jupiter's inward migration and help to turn Jupiter around and almost pulls it back to the outer solar system. Like a sailboat switching direction, Jupiter tacks away from the sun. The behavior of the giant outer planets leaves our solar system with no hot Jupiter and has a dramatic effect on the small inner planets too. As it's coming back outwards, what has Jupiter done to the inner solar system? It has removed all of the material in its path all the way down to where we find the Earth today. And all of that material pushed into essentially a narrow band in the inner solar system is what is going to come together to form the rocky planets as we find them today. According to the Grand Tack model, without Jupiter, the rocky terrestrial planets of the inner solar system might have never formed. One of those planets is Earth. So as much as we owe our existence to Jupiter, we also owe it to Saturn, because if Jupiter had kept moving in closer to the sun, we almost certainly wouldn't be here now. 